All right. All right. Okay, big change. Yes, huge change. Yeah. Um, you can see I've done almost everything of the, the gold, mm -hmm. which is in that case, that with, uh, with this figure, it's almost uh, of the armor. Yeah. Because it's it's really a golden shiny armor. Um, you can see what I've uh, talked about earlier: the uh, highlight that is continuative on the whole leg. Mm -hmm. Same here. Yeah. Very nice. Looks really really cool. And um, I think I spent about what three hours, three yeah. and a half hours on all of this gold. Mm -hmm. So um, yes, it is. Uh, it is a lot of work. Uh, yes. It's not just. Uh, Spraying it gold and dipping it <laughs> in an army painter. <laughs> but I think the result speaks for itself. Yeah, I'm also really happy also with the uh, small gold elements that I painted here on the hammer and also this here. It looks really nice and shiny. Yeah, yeah. And the thing is, it looks like gold. Yep. And that's what we wanted. Very nice. Um, so I will show you how I achieved um, that strong contrast and blending. That, um, it's a little bit different than here because the surface is just a little different and you can pull the brush quite nice and easy with the side of the brush. Mm -hmm. um, same as, uh, as on the leg, we have the highlight running around here on the whole top part of the armor. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll have this here as well. Yep. And um, also here on this upper edge to give it more kind of a more a stronger separation. Uh, also that we have shorter distances for our transitions and yeah. that will make the material look reflective. Mm -hmm. That's one of the, the key ingredients for good non-metallic metal is uh, short blending distances. So that if they, get to, if they turn out to be too long, um, it looks more like plastic than like metal. But now that you've painted, let's say, 95% of the gold, uh, how does that miniature feel as far as painting is concerned? Uh, really nice. Um, quite large surfaces. Mm -hmm. um, and you have a lot of nice round elements, um, such as the kneecap. But uh, yeah, once you paint the highlights on that, you have to make sure you also do round highlights to get a really nice um, look of the, of the shape. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, the, the miniature comes with all different uh, kind of shapes and it's really interesting to paint. Yeah, and in the a few short breaks that we have taken, we've uh, actually, like real fanboys, went to the uh, White Wharf and looked at all of the different miniatures in this set. And there's some really cool stuff in there, I have to say. Like uh, the guy with the flay and chaos is, uh, is really cool. Actually, some of the chaos guys are really, really awesome. Yeah. Um, so I'm just continuing with a little bit brighter highlight here on the top. And then I go for a little brush with uh, some white on the tip. And create a very strong blending to one side. Yeah. And again, you can see the power of a loaded brush. That was like a two second blending. And uh, if you achieve that, it feels really good. <laughs> <laughs> now, even Ben doesn't always get it right. Sometimes he has um, too much of the tip color in there. Um, that's usually a little bit more of a problem than if it's too little. If it's too little, you can always uh, do it again. Yes, yeah, look, look at that. This pulls it down and creates a blending. Okay. So I'm mixing a lighter middle tone. Um, to soft it out here in the middle. Good. Okay. 
and just with a clean brush and some white. Just pushing that highlight here in the, the top just a tiny bit more. You can see how really small but how extreme that little highlight is there. So it's really white on the smallest area and that's exactly what you're going for for non-metallic metal. And now for a warmer shadow to the side, um, mixing a bit more of the tank brown to the shadow color. Cleaning the brush. Feathering it off. Again, that is a pretty important step. You'll if you're already uh, regular in our videos, um, you've uh, seen this a couple of times. I'm just going to point it out one more time that um, Ben oftentimes just places the color, blends it a little bit, then cleans the brush to basically just contain uh, water and then softs out the sides of what he just blended. Okay, again, that's not that base color. Paint again base color on the brush, white to the tip. And to the other side. Pure white. It's one of the things that you see that's different uh, when it comes to highlighting of edges uh, that uh, Ben is currently doing. He's not creating an equally thick, all bright highlight line all around the shoulder pad but only on areas where he really wants the lights to be. That's um, definitely a different approach from uh, you can have the standard tabletop if you want. So if, uh, I'm just taking some pure white to draw a line here on the other edge. Mm -hmm. And now I'm thinning that out again with a bit of that mid-tone. Like this way I can create a very dramatic blending and you already have the extreme highlight kind of predefined because of the white. That's, uh, Quite important to draw that uh, highlight uh, line here uh, just along the edge because mm -hmm. that will give us later on a nice separation uh, once the blue is in place. Yeah. And I did that with the light yellow, and now I'm just above our highlight here. Just use some pure white. I will do the same here to make that really uh, pop out. It's a little bit too uh, here, too hard in the transition. Yeah, uh, that's really an easy fix if you just um, kind of glaze over it a little bit. <clears throat> Same on that side, yeah. 
Ja, gut, fixed. Okay. Und so, Tank Brown, Pin Down. Ja, yeah, this will be even a little bit, bit warmer. Okay, and I want a highlight here along the edge, but not as bright as before. You can see how then sometimes kind of interrupts that line a little bit. It creates a couple of lighter highlights there. And um, that's actually something that's very important. Um, so it doesn't look like a one closed line all around. Also, you saw the different um, brightnesses of different highlight lines he used there. Yeah, it's nice also to, to pick out some of those dots that you just created and to scratches in the material. Right, same on the back. So once more, just uh, check exactly what uh, Ben's brush is doing. Placing the color, clean the brush. And a little bit to the sides. Actually drying right quite quickly, no? Isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. with the highlight with the lighter color and put the same color in the brush just some white for a highlight you can see this looks always very drastic in the first moment the place I start paint down but as soon as the blending is done it's uh, it makes a lot of sense over that to soft it up. Yeah, the highlight was a little white and uh, now you're basically kind of making it a little shorter or not as big by um, going over it with the base color again. Yeah, that will also do the, uh, as I did on the other side with the uh, glaze with the um, tank brown. Mm -hmm. Also again to make it darker and more contrasted. When it's trying to hit the corner there with the side of the brush. This of course enables him to kind of keep the line as thin as possible. Oops. Yep, <laughs> sometimes it doesn't. <laughs> Let me rephrase, it gives him the chance of actually keeping the line <laughs> as thin as possible.
Okay, and some, and some, some small scratches where the blending is not as clean as I want it to. Yep, as I said earlier, great way to hide blending mistakes. You can spend an hour to make it as smooth as possible, or you spend five minutes and put some scratches on. And generally, the one with the scratches looks better. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but very nice, rich metal. Right. Pretty awesome. So, um, so that was about uh, 20 minutes for that shoulder pad. And now if you're an army painter, you might think, whoa, I'm going to paint a whole miniature in 20 minutes. Um, well, probably not, but <laughs> but um, that's, that's um, I want to say, a pretty good result. Um, I think even for a showcase, you wouldn't do much different there, would you? Yeah, maybe just a couple of glazes more. Yeah. Maybe adding another color like purple in the shadows to, to play a bit with the depth. Mm -hmm. But um, basically just the very same. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, now, what would be the next part? The next part would be the helmet, right? Yes, the okay, helmet. We'll do that in the next take. Okay.